Hi! Today I am reviewing a trade paperback. I used to read a lot of trade paperbacks and a lot of comics. I've slowed down a little bit in recent years because it seems to me that the creativity isn't always there. I love the extensively beautiful artwork and often startling visuals that it could create. And I love the way <clears throat> that certainly in the 90s, most of the comics I got had amazing, inventative, creative stories to tell, and they combined it with artwork that was often good. Whereas these days, a lot of the trade paperbacks that I see tend to have computer-generated artwork that feels very blah. It feels like it's been plugged into a computer and the computer's done it all. I don't know if that's true. I'm not into, I don't do illustration or graphic design, but that's what they look like. And the stories tend to match the artwork. They tend to be a re-re-rehash of a re-re-re-origin of a character that I was already bored with ten years ago. So I don't read as many. And then I saw this one in the library. Look at that beautiful cover work. That is artwork. That's what I'm talking about. I got feelings of Aubrey Beardsley and Norman Lindsley from the artwork. I recent, I, when I read the back of it, I found out that it was actually strongly sourced from another artist that I hadn't heard of. What's his name? Henry Clark. So the artist is Colleen Doran. You can't see that from the cover too well because of the library stickers. And the name of the novel is Snow, Glass and Apples. When I saw it, the artwork was the main eye-catcher. This did not feel like it was computer-generated at all. It was gorgeous, it's got balance, it's got use of colour, it's got its own dramatic quality in a way that I absolutely loved. And then I saw that the words were written by Neil Gaiman. I don't think there's ever been a single thing of Neil Gaiman's that I didn't like at best and adore quite often. So I knew this wasn't exactly a Neil Gaiman comic. Um, but between the gorgeous cover art and a quick flu flick through of the book suggested that the internal artwork matched the cover art, which is, again, not something you can always really trust um, with comics. But when I leafed through, I thought the artwork was so gorgeous and so unique that it didn't really matter too much almost what the story was going to be, though I had confidence in that as well. So a taste of the artwork which is always lush, gorgeous, and Beardsley or Clark-esque, and uses colour very creatively. I've always liked comics where they use colour to make a difference or tell the story in their own right. So the panel on my left is the Queen, who has just been made Queen by the death of her husband. And the panel on the other invokes darkness, and despair and a whole heap of other things both by its amazing use of line using the laid out body to separate the scenes for example the bare pale skin the moodiness of the dark and the use of blue it's amazing throughout and here's another one actually before <clears throat> before I bring this one up on screen I'd like to mention this is a fairy tale retelling which also caught me I love fairy tale retellings but this is not a fairy tale for kids. This is very much an adult fairy tale and there are erotic scenes to it. Not heavily erotic, but if you look at this, this is a beautiful, beautiful image and that's about the level of eroticism. You're going to get beautiful visual art, great themes. So the overall theme for this story is Snow White. A very topical, I'm going to say, fairy tale, isn't it? In this fairy tale, Gaiman and Colleen explore the concept of what if the evil queen wasn't evil? What if she sent that girl, little girl out into the woods to have her heart cut out by the huntsman for a reason? What if the little girl was actually a vampire? Maybe the queen actually sent her out to protect the realm? Maybe it was a wise thing to do. And here is a couple of gorgeous and quite scary images from the concept of what happened to the heart when the heart was brought back by the huntsman. Again, look at that amazing imagery. That, that's 
amazing artwork. I loved every second of this book. It's a slow starter. So the first few pages, I was thinking, okay, Neil Gaiman wrote the words. He can't have dedicated much to it because there's not a lot of words. The early part tells the story mostly through pictures. And it doesn't feel like a Snow White story. It obviously isn't your normal one, but it doesn't feel like it for a while later. It's told through the eyes of the stepmother, who is far from wicked, though somewhat misguided. And it's lush, gorgeous, thoroughly enjoyable. I've read it three times since I got it out from the library. I'll probably read it again at least once before I give it back. If I come across it anywhere easy to find, I will we'll probably buy it because this is the sort of one that I would pick up for its art and look through it. And there's a few places where the wording is so beautiful that you can almost read it as a poem as well. It's deeply sad. It doesn't have a happy ending. Spoiler. What the happy, en happy ending isn't and how it comes about, find out for yourself. But yeah. There's also a lot of Art Deco elements to this, I feel, as well. Here's an example of one of the, the be more beautiful Art Deco-inspired type panels. Again, the gorgeousness of colour, but the specific types of colours feel very Art Deco to me, as well as the ornamentation and the female drawings. So in terms of pure artwork, this book scores very, very high, and the fairy tale retelling is all the best of Gaiman that he's ever produced. I don't know how much is owed to either one of the collaborators, but it works together. Now at the back is where we find out that Colleen's notes say, most of the art in this book was done entirely by hand, including all the niggling little details and heavy blacks. As you may imagine, this is an exceptionally labor intensive approach. It shows. This feels like real artwork, and it's amazing at the back that she's got a few sketches showing how that artwork was produced. So here we've got some black and whites, not too much reflection I hope, showing the development of a panel of the Queen sitting in her solar. That image is used in a couple of ways in the book. That You've got that gorgeous art, again, arch behind her of the window, again a bit Art Deco. And you've got the very fluid motions that she uses to make her panels dynamic. Now, a bit further on, I'm just going to show you one more image from the back of the book where it's like her visual storyboard. Visual storyboard is amazing. Look at all those panels. Look at all the work that went into it. If, if most trade paperbacks still did this sort of artwork level, look at the image. The sheer simplicity of that, that central image is amazing. If more trade paperbacks still put this level of artwork into them, I would probably still be buying trade paperbacks at the rate I was doing in the 80s. I suppose I should be grateful that I'm not. I've got whole shelves of trade paperbacks, and I've spent a huge amount of money buying them over the years. Uh, thank you for listening to me ramble on about this gorgeous trade paperback. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't own it. I hope I will one day. I really hope I don't forget about it and hopefully this review will help me not to forget about it. So I mostly talk about science fiction I think on this channel. Are there other people out there who love trade paperbacks the same way I do? If there are any please tell me or if you know of another YouTube channel with you, that I could link to that reviews trade paperbacks I haven't found any. But I believe that big booktube is a big thing. So let me know.